Hi there, so today we're going to have a look at Unit 14.1 Sampling Methods. So the objectives of today's lesson to understand the different sampling methods and to use stratified sampling to select a sample group. Prior knowledge, then things we need to have before we can start this lesson. You need to be able to use um, your calculator to enter fractions. So using the fraction button. So if you have a Casio calculator, the button should look like the one on the screen. If not, you may have a different type of button. It may say something like A, B, C on it, but you should know where the fraction button is on your calculator. You should also understand that a fraction is simply a division. So 3 over 4, 3 quarters is the same as 3 divided by 4. And be able to find the fraction of an amount. So 2 fifths of 400. So if we wanted to do that in our calculator, we would type in 2 fifths multiplied by 400 and we get 160. Check that you have that prior knowledge now. If not, stop this video and go back and have a look at a different one. OK, so looking at sampling then, why do we need to do sampling? So how would we compile TV viewing figures? OK, uh, we certainly don't go around and ask every single person in the country what it is they're watching. So we need to have a sample. So a sample is taken of different households who are monitored and that data is then used to compile those figures. So very much like your use on the computer as well, you can select whether or not companies are given feedback about whether you're using their sites and the data that's collected the same on your mobile phone. So just be aware of that. Uh, we also want to avoid bias, so it's important the sample represents everyone. So bias is if we were to just select a particular group and leave out other groups. So we want to generally try and avoid bias when we're collecting our sample. And it's done for TV viewing figures by dividing the households into categories. They're called strata and taking samples in proportion to the size of each category. So our strata, for instance, might be um, under fives, it might be teenagers, it might be middle-aged women, it might be older people. So we can have more than one strata. Um, the singular of strata is a stratum. Uh, an example then of doing that is a stratified sample. So we're going to have a look at some different sampling methods um, but mainly focusing on stratified sampling. So a few of the different methods you will need to consider. Random sampling. So you'll probably have experienced random sampling at some point. So that's perhaps where we put names into a hat um, and they are chosen at random. So the way we would perhaps do a raffle, something like that. So every member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. We could use systematic sampling, so that's where members of the population are taken at regular intervals, so perhaps every hundredth person from a telephone directory or from a list of people. Um, so we can set the interval and then choose from that list. Uh, another one might be quotient sampling, so that's where we ask a certain amount of people from each category. So, as it says, if we were in the street and we we're asking people a particular question. Once we've asked enough people over 65, we wouldn't ask any more of that age group. So we're just asking a specific number of people from each different group. And finally, then, the one we're going to focus on the most today is stratified sampling. So stratified sampling is where we want to have um, a cross section of the population and we need the size of the stratum to reflect the proportion of the population. So remember proportion, generally a fraction. So an example then, if I want two fifths of the sample population were boys, then the sample should contain two fifths uh, boys in that strata. The actual number of people we choose will depend on the people in the sample. So we set a sample size. So, for example, if there were a thousand people in the sample, we've said that two fifths of the population are boys. So we should choose two fifths of the sample to be boys. There would be 400 boys. OK. Why do we have all these different types of sampling then? So random sampling. Random sampling is good because it means every member of the population has an equal chance, which makes it really fair. So as I said, things like raffles 
would use random sampling to choose their values. Um, the downside of that though, it can be very time consuming and is usually pretty impractical. If I had a thousand people and I had to write out all their names and put them in a hat, that would take a really long time. Systematic sampling then. Um, you're unlikely to get a biased sample from it, but it's not strictly random, remember. Some members of the population can't be chosen once you've decided where to start. So if I decide to take a sample of every 10th person, then the people numbered 1 to 9 have got no chance of being chosen at all. Quotient sampling uh, is easier to manage. So if we're just choosing an amount of people to ask from each group, then as soon as we hit that target, we know we are there. But it could be biased, OK? So if we're only asking people on the street or in a shop, the sample might not represent all the people. So you'll often see people uh, perhaps in the town centre stopping people at asking questions. Now, obviously, if they're in the town centre in the middle of the day stopping people, there's a good chance the only people they're going to stop are people who are not at work. So perhaps elderly people or people with young children who are at home. That doesn't give them a representative um, of the entire population. So stratified sampling then uh, is the best way to reflect the population accuracy. Uh, sorry, accurately. Um, but it is time consuming and you have to limit the number in your sample to make it practical. So you can see there are pros and cons for each of those different sampling methods. OK, so stratified sampling then. So we've given a hypothesis there. Pupils prefer to do maths in the morning. The table shows the number of students in the school by year group. And we want to take a sample of 50 students. So we're not going to go and ask every single child in the school, do they prefer to do maths in the morning? We're going to take a representative sample of 50 students, stratified by year groups. We now have to work out how many pupils from each year group we should ask. So remember we said stratified sample is where the fraction of the population in that year group is going to be the same as the fraction we take of our sample. So... First step is to find the total number of pupils. So we might be told this in the question. Uh, we weren't told at this time, so we're going to need to work that out. So if we add up all the students, there are a thousand students in this school. Then we need to find the fraction for each year group to know uh, the proportion of each year group that we have. And we're going to multiply that by the sample size. So we're going to find that same fraction of our sample. So in year seven, there were 200 students out of 1,000. So that's our fraction multiplied by our sample size of 50. So we want 200 one thousandths of 50, which is 10 pupils. If we do the same for year eight, again, there were 200 pupils in year eight. So we get another 10 pupils. For year nine, there were 235 out of 1,000. Now that comes to 11.75. Now we obviously can't have 11.75 of a pupil, so we then need to decide whether we're going to round up or down. And we may need to adjust that later, depending on how many numbers we need to round. But for the moment, I've rounded it to 12 pupils. In year 10, 220 one thousandths times 50 means exactly 11 pupils. And in year 11, 145 out of 1,000 times 50, again gave us a decimal 7.25, so this time decided to round it down to seven pupils. The final step then is to check that our total adds up to the sample size. So we were told we were only allowed a sample of 50, so we need to check. And because we've done some rounding up and down, uh, our number might not round to 50. So we need to check that first and we may have to adjust our rounding later if it doesn't add up to our sample size. So let's just check. And in this case, it does add up to 50. So we've got our correct amount from each year group. If you need to pause the video now, just check through the calculations, make sure you're happy. So remember we found the fraction of the year group and we've multiplied that by the sample size so we get the same fraction of our sample to tell us how many pupils to choose. Part B then asked us to explain how we would choose the students 
from year seven. So once we've decided that we needed 10 students from year seven, how are we actually going to identify those seven students? So there are a couple of choices we might make. We might choose them by random sampling. So we could give every child in the year group a number, put the numbers in a box and then pick 10 numbers out and they would be the students we ask. Or we might try a systematic approach. So perhaps choosing every 20th student from a list of students until we have got 10 students. OK, your turn then. So pause the video now read through the question carefully and have a go at working out how many students from each group we should be selecting. Let's have a look at the solutions then. So, first thing then, we knew we had 450 students, so it told us that at the beginning of the question, but it is worth adding up our students to check. So for Greek, we had 45 out of 450, that's our fraction, multiplied by our sample size of 70 this time, gave us seven pupils. For Spanish, 125 out of the 450 times 70, 19.44. So again, this time I've decided to round down to 19 pupils. For German, we ended up with 14 pupils. And for French, we got another decimal, 29.55. So in that case, I've rounded up to 30 pupils. So again, just check at the end that they've added up to our 70 pupils. If you've rounded differently, you may need to adjust your rounding to make sure you do end up with an exact value of 70 when you add all of those together. OK, so where might we want to use this stratified sampling in real life then. Um, so manufacturers use a stratified sample to be able to check their different products. So we've got three different types of manufacture there and three different frequencies of sampling. You need to try to match the manufacturer with the frequency of sampling and you need to be able to explain your reasons. Pause the video now, have a go at that activity. OK, then. So uh, let's have a look then at where these match up. So our aircraft manufacturer then, one in every one product, safety critical. So we have to check every single item. So really large items, especially safety critical ones, we're going to have to check everything. Uh, the mobile phone manufacturer, about one in every hundred. So not as safety critical. But defects could be really expensive. So if you were producing a batch of iPhones and there was an issue with some of them, it would cost you a lot of money to repair that and get that right. Uh, whereas the toothbrush manufacturer then, one in every thousand products. So if there is a manufacturing default, it's not going to be life threatening and probably not going to be that expensive to repair. Um, and it would be quite cheap then to just throw away any that have a defect and make some more. OK, so final thoughts on today's lesson then. Looking at the different manufacturers, have a think about what type of sampling each might use. OK, thank you for watching today's lesson then. Uh, please click on the link to move on to the next lesson and don't forget to subscribe.